sometimes you don't have a function. You have a relation between two variables. A classic example is x squared plus y squared equals, say, 25. The graph of the points in the plane that satisfy this equation is a circle. But that's not the graph of a function, right? This graph fails the vertical line test. For a given input value, say 4 in this case, there's multiple y values which satisfy this equation. So I can't simply solve this equation for y. Nevertheless, if you pick a specific point, like 4, 3, you might be able to find a function whose graph traces out that same curve. So yeah, if I pick 4, 3, there is a function, y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared, which traces out a piece of the whole curve. Right? I'm just ignoring the rest of this. And this little tiny piece of the curve can be regarded as a function. If I had picked a different point, then I want to pick a different function. Instead of the square root of 25 minus x squared, if I wanted to stand down here near the point 4 comma minus 3, well, then maybe I'd pick the function y equals negative the square root of 25 minus x squared. If I ignore the rest of this and I'm just looking at this curve here, yeah, this curve by itself is a function. If I ignore this, it satisfies the vertical line test. This function is picking out a piece of the curve given by this equation, which is, yeah, only valid near the point 4 comma minus 3. But maybe that's all I care about for the time being. So let's say there is a function, y equals f of x, that satisfies the original equation. Well, then I can write that down. y equals f of x, say, satisfies the equation, just means that x squared plus f of x squared equals 25. Now, I'm not saying that this gives me all of the solutions, right? The graph x squared plus y squared equals 25 is a circle, fails the vertical line test. There's no function that gives me all those outputs because there's multiple outputs for a given input. All I'm saying is that I've got some function which traces out a piece of the whole curve. Then I can differentiate. So if this is true for a bunch of values of x, then I can differentiate this. The derivative of this sum is the sum of the derivative. So the derivative of x squared is 2x plus the derivative of f of x squared. I'm going to use a chain rule to do that. It's the derivative of the outside function at the inside times the derivative of the inside function equals the derivative of 25, which is 0. Now I can solve. So I'll subtract 2x from both sides. And I'm left with 2 times f of x times f prime of x equals negative 2x. And then I'll divide both sides by 2 times f of x. And I'll find that f prime of x is minus 2x over 2f of x. And I could cancel those 2's and just get minus x over f of x. It seems like a funny situation. The derivative depends on more than just x. It also has an f of x in it. Another way to say it is that the slope of the tangent line, dy dx, is negative x over y. Right? y is f of x. And it does really seem a little bit off-putting initially in these kinds of calculations that the slope of the tangent line depends on more than just x. It's negative x over y for this particular case. But think back to the picture for this case. Right? The picture is a circle. And what I'm saying is the slope of the tangent line is negative x over y. So if you pick that point, say 4, 3, and you ask, what's the slope of the tangent line to the circle at the point 4, 3? This equation is telling you the slope is negative 4 thirds. And yeah, that line is going down. The slope's negative. What's the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point 4, negative 3? Same equation tells us that the slope there is 4 thirds. And yeah, this, this line's going up. The slope of the tangent line is depending on more than just the x-coordinate. Right? You need to also know the y-coordinate in order to know exactly what function you're actually looking at near that point. And that totally affects the slope of the tangent line. To do all these sorts of calculations, the trick is the chain rule. For instance, if you're given some relation like this, x squared plus y cubed equals 1, you just got to make sure to think of y as a function of x. So that when you differentiate both sides, the derivative of the left-hand side is 2x plus the derivative of y cubed equals the derivative of 1, which is 0. But what's the derivative of y cubed? If y is a function of x, then when you differentiate this, you've got to use the chain rule. 
It's 3 times the inside function squared. That's the derivative of the third power function times the derivative of the inside function. I'll just write y prime. And as long as you're careful to use the chain rule, you'll be able to do these kinds of implicit differentiation problems, and you'll eventually solve for y prime in terms of both x and y. The chain rule is our friend.